Hi everyone, it's Gail and it's Mixed Media Monday. I am going to uh, show you some of the neurographic art that I've been doing and I thought I'd try some different sorts of mediums um, to color in some of the ones I've already done. So I just want to see what different looks we can get. So let's uh, start off by saying hi and hugs to Mary Lynn, Deb, Sue, and Kayleen. Thank you so much for watching and your kind comments. Okay, let's see. Um, so let's let's take a look. Sorry, I'm just writing down the time there. Um, let's take a look at, at what I've been doing while I've been watching TV at night. <laughs> okay, so this is my little kind of experiment book. So this is the one that we'll be working on. It's also an art journal. So um, so I think I think you've seen this one maybe. And this one I did a little bit with colored pencils. Um, and I don't love it. I need to find some blending. Um, let's see, Shannon Green used Gamsol. I don't know. I don't even know where to find it, but I haven't looked either. So, um, so there's that. So I have a bunch that aren't colored. That's a crazy one. I must have been on a crazy... I don't know, crazy something, but it kind of goes with the art journal page on the other side. So uh, this one is markers. This is primarily the Faber-Castell pit pens. So there's that one. This one, obviously not colored yet. I do have paint from doing the, um, doing my pages. This page is my one, it's kind of like my table when I'm doing TV. So it's getting all marked up and it'll be something someday, but not right now. Let's see. And this is the one, I think I did it last night. Yes. And it's kind of crazy and makes my eyes go wacky, <laughs> but, but it's, it's kind of fun too. Okay. So Lynn, um, I've also been playing on jelly prints and that's been really fun. I zeroed in so you could see a little better. So I need to make sure I'm in frame. So I love this one. This one was super fun. Took, took a while, which I kind of like that too, when it takes me a while to get it done. This one, I don't know that it's my favorite, but it was kind of fun. I, I just had thought about doing lines that went like this and then backing it up with another line like this. And so that's how that one came out. Um, this one I really like. And this one I really like. This one, the background is brushos. And I think that one came out kind of cool. And then you've seen this one. Yeah, and so that's all I have on the, um, on the backgrounds at this moment so um maybe i uh i will link a couple videos below i'll link my first one where i did neurographic art and then i'll also link shannon greens because she explains it very well too so um was just looking to see so i don't know I don't think I'll go into how you make this. In simple terms, it's lines. So in this particular one, I did lines like this, and then, um, you know, and then split it and split it. That's how I did this one. So lines, and they should go from one edge of your page to another. For instance, like yesterday's, yesterday's let me get to it I did lines like this see you can see on this edge so um, lines first then 
wherever your lines intersect, like right here, you're going to curve the edges. So you're going to go toward the intersection. So if that makes sense. Uh, let me just grab a post-it note and a pencil. And so your lines intersect like this, right? You're going to curve toward the intersection. So the bottom of your curve is going to be toward your intersection, like so, and then fill it in. Does that make sense when you look at this? So um, that, that is the first two. Lines, edge to edge on your paper, uh, curving the intersections. And then you can go back if you want, and let me show you one where I did that. I did it on that one, but it's hard to see. Let's see. One of these will show it better. This one does. Then you can go back and put in shapes. So I've put in circles here. Can you see those circles? And once you put in the shapes, then um, once you put in the shapes, then you once again do the intersection um, curvy lines like that. So hope that makes sense. And, um, and like I say, Shannon does a good job on hers of, of teaching it too. So that's what you do. And it's like, you can see this one, I just was like crazy with my lines and every one comes out different because you know, your lines are different. Here's a good one where you can see the shapes added at the end. And then my feeling is you take artistic license and do whatever you want. <laughs> but that's just me. But I do find this extremely calming. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, I just sit and doodle and watch a movie or whatever. And it's, it's just great. So let's do what I wanted to do today, which is try these other mediums on, on pages and just see, just see how they do and see how they, how they behave and stuff. Oh, that's a little postcard. Oh, isn't that cute? That was in the back of my of my journal. Maybe I thought I'd put it on a page or something. I don't know. Might have to put that in my finished ephemera pile. <laughs> okay, so get my little thing centered here. Okay, so I have a variety of different things. First of all, I have my gelatos and I'm going to try, I'm going to try some of them. So, like, these are Faber-Castell, too. Faber-Castell gelatos. Oh, that one's nice and dark. I'm thinking I want a dark one to kind of do that right there. So let's just see. Let's see. First of all, I'm going to move it down a little bit to where I'm working. Let's see how it works on just regular, just a regular paper as opposed to the acrylic paint and then I'm going to just take my finger and rub the gelato in Ooh, I do like it I do like it let's see they say as you're coloring these in that you should um, not just like have a pink a blue a green a yellow an orange a purple like that that you should do kind of sections that you're you'll be happier with your piece i don't know again experiment with it and see what you think oh i do like that this one's a kind of a shiny one um okay so i'm gonna come down this away That does turn out kind of cool, don't you think? I like it. So Faber-Castell gelatos. So 
So there we go there. I'm gonna come all the way down here because again, there's purple um, paint from doing the art journal page. I guess this is a plus to having a lot of unfinished art journals. <laughs> Because once I discovered this, I was like, oh, I could do that on the backs of the pages. That would work. Ooh, I like that. That's really cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this one because it's right. Right there too and it's got paint on it oh those are fun okay I was hoping they would work now I've got a bit here too so I think I'm going to come around the corner and catch that one and then I will I believe have covered up all the paint got a little bit here but that's okay Yes. I'm just going to go go crazy here and do two at once. How's that? It's a little hard to stay in the lines. <laughs> there is that. But other than that, I'm really liking the gelato. Kind of cool, huh? I'm looking in the camera to see what it looks like. Okay, it looks like I need a little more right here from looking through the camera. Okay. Well, cool. So, um, in between... I'm just going to take a baby wipe and wipe off my finger. So then on this one, what I'm thinking is I've got a couple more purples. Are these the same color? Lavender and lavender. Yes, they are. So then I could, I could come in with this color. Lavender, it says, but it looks a little pink to me. That's okay. So my thought was I would just do, you know, kind of a few squares on each one and, or whatever these are, shapes. And then try another one and try another one. We can come back and um, we can come back and finish them if we want to. So then, because this is just kind of my own little workbook, if you will, I thought I'd come back and put a little label on these or just write it on somewhere that this is gelato so i kind of remember what each technique looks like okay so i have to do one more i'm sorry <laughs> It's hard to stop once you get started. I find that even with the, um, when I'm doing one of these, I get a little sad when I've got all the intersections done and like the pieces done. It's like, oh, I was having fun doing that. Not that I couldn't start another one. Usually I just do one a night though, because I don't want to get tired of it either. 
So love the gelatos. Awesome. Because I haven't used my gelatos in a long time. And as you can see, I have just about every color from my mixed media days. And then in this little pouch, I have, um, I have, these are uh, all, sorry, my brain is going 50 miles an hour in another direction. These are pretty much all um, metallics. You know what I forgot is my watercolors. Hold on just one second. I'll be right back. Okay. Got the water. Let me just grab the paints. That was the one thing I wanted to try too. I'm just going to grab a couple that are well used, well loved, but we'll try those too. And the reason why I was thinking that is with gelatos, you can also put water with gelatos. And um, so we might, let's see, how could we do this? I'm going to, I'm going to go down in the corner with some, like some bright yellow. And let's, let's try it with the, gosh, I'm going to need a paintbrush too, aren't I? Don't have one of those handy, do I? I don't think so. They're all over in my drawer. But I do have a little, this little guy in there that should work. Let's just try and see what it does. Making sure I'm in camera. Okay. Let's just do a couple down here and see. Um... We'll just see what it's like adding water and see see what happens. Oh yeah. It's just another way of blending it. So you can use your hand or you can use water, either way. But I do like that, that's pretty. Yeah. Cool. So gelatos are really versatile and I love playing with them. So how cool is that, guys? All right. Awesome. Well, this is a sad little brush, but we might end up using it or I might run and get a better one for watercolor. So there's gelato. Okay. While that's drying, I'm going to run grab a little brush for some watercolors. Okay. Okay, I just grabbed whatever was at the top. This one looks like it's broken and I fixed it with a masking tape. Okay, so that is, that is gelatos. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Ugh, such a, such a mess I am. Okay, gelatos. I'm loving them. I love them rubbed in. I think I love them more with the water. Let's, let's do this. Let's, uh. Let's take our water and go over the purple and see how much better we like that, if at all. Oh, now, interestingly, I don't. I don't like the purple. It, it, um, what do I want to say? Um, sort of uh, dulls it down makes it opaque. I mean, you can, or transparent, you can see through it where this is more opaque and I like that better. Okay. Well, you never know till you try, right? Okay. So dry off you guys. Okay. So let me just push my gelatos to the side and we'll try 
another medium. Well, that's getting dry. Okay, I'm gonna keep that brush out, let it dry. Okay, so another thing that I have that I thought might be kind of fun to try are these Tim Holtz Distress Crayons. I don't have a ton of them, but I have a few colors. So I thought we could we could try that as well. Okay, that's pretty dry. Oh yeah, it's st still yellow coming off of it, but at least the colors go with this page, so we won't worry about it. Okay, that's the colored pencil one. So let's try the gelatos on this one and see what happens. I don't know. Okay. And I feel like the distr distress crayons are a little bit like gelatos, but I just don't know. So, yeah, we're definitely going to need to rub those again. Yeah. I wonder if the Distress Crayon is the Tim Holtz version, kind of, of um, a gelato. What do you think? I don't know. But it's very, it's very, it looks very similar. Um, this doesn't move quite as easily as the gelato so that's that's something um but it's okay it's okay i'm not going to do a ton on this one because i'm not quite done doodling <laughs> i might do these because they're done being doodled <laughs> um I think my husband got home. Gosh, I didn't even hear the door. It's quiet. Okay, so I'm just going to rub over those. It does kind of fill in better. It doesn't rub as easily though, and it doesn't rub as mm, as easily, and I'm I have more trouble staying in the lines. Okay, so I'm just gonna say distress. Distressed crayons, maybe not my favorite for this particular application. But it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. It's just not my favorite so far. So far, I really like the gelatos. I think I'll really like the colored pencils too once I figure out a better way to blend them. Okay. Nope. 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 On the uh, Distress Crayons. Okay. We can throw those aside. Okay. The other thing I wanted to try. Oh, this might be a good one to try it on. How oh, are we? We're, we're pretty good there. Okay. And that is... Um, oil pastels. I wanted to try those and like the kind I have here that I got at an estate sale <laughs> are portfolio oil pastels. Uh, there's also, um, I think it's, yes, Pentel Arts is another brand of oil pastels. So that that might be something you'd rather do. I don't know. Okay, so what do we want to do? Let's just go here. Again, these are going to be a rub with your finger. They're real creamy, though. Yeah, those are going to work nicely. If I fill 
on the whole thing. Okay, yeah, I like those. So oil pastels and gelato so far, I'm a fan of. Yeah, these are cool. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, really nice. So let's just finish this circle. I think my husband's going to go mow the grass. Yeah, these are these are real creamy and yummy. I think a plus of something like this too is it's really tactile, you know? I mean, you can feel the creaminess as you color and also as you spread the color out with your finger. Okay, yeah, I like that. And what color would I like to have on the outside of that? Mm-hmm. Maybe, I, I think I kind of want to go a little crazy on this one because this is crazy. Let's do, this is purple. Violet. Violet. Gail, don't sing. <laughs> you can't sing. So just don't. Oh, let's see. There we go. Yeah, how fun is that? That's really fun. Um, kind of like to do a little. There's a bluey turquoisey in there. Um, what's this color? Cerulean? Oh, Cerulean. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'll tell you. Yesterday's Wordle and Quirtle, let me tell you, I was so frustrated. <laughs> and... I mean, I never even heard of one of the words. It's like, and then I looked it up and I thought, well, that is the most obscure word you possibly could have chosen. I'm like, I don't know about this game. I do, I do actually enjoy it, but it's like, I wouldn't have gotten that word in a million years. I think it was on Quirtle was where that one was, and... I wouldn't have gotten it a million years, and I didn't get it, so I lost. Ooh, yeah, that is just fun, how those blend. Really neat. Okay, then I'm going to do this one. I'm going to, it's kind of going light to dark here, so I'm going to really color this in a lot. And see, these pan these uh, oil pastels that I got at this estate sale, four bucks, brand new. I think I'm using them for the first time. Can you see how that kind of graduates in color from light to dark? I guess you can kind of see. That's really fun. Okay, so what if I do this one fairly light? Even lighter than that one if I can. That one, that one was a little darker. Wonder. I'm just gonna use what's on my finger. And then that makes it lighter. Okay, that was fun.
Yes, oil pastels are definite. Yes, I really think those are fun. Okay, um, the last thing I wanted to try was watercolors. I guess we'll do this one. Um, uh, and I just have, these are just, I have lots of different watercolors. This particular one is just my cheapo ones that came from the dollar store. So, you know, the good news about that is you don't need to have a lot of money to do art necessarily. The dollar store, the thrift store, and um, the dollar store, the thrift store, and garage sales, any, you know, estate sales, anything like that. So... One thing you need to make sure when you're using this wet medium is that you've got permanent marker that you've drawn with. Yeah. It's fine too. It's quick. So now I'm thinking this whole black space down here that I might do that whole thing in green. I forgot how much I like to watercolor too. All of this is just very, it's very relaxing. You're not making a, an item like you are with a, with a journal, but still so fun. And once again, I do think that I, you know, the, the claim is that this neurographic art is good for, um, is good therapy kind of and i i would agree it's very calming to me and i need that because i am such a crazy go 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 kind of girl every once in a while i need myself a little zen <laughs> don't don't do it my mom always said that would you just relax i can't i can't not be doing something and at least when I'm doing this, it's it's a calming sort of activity, you know. So I hope my book is in the right place. looking to see if it is it's pretty good okay um so I'm gonna do a little more with this green and then we'll switch colors and then we might switch back to another one I have no idea where we're at time wise but at least you've seen the different things that I wanted to try as far as coloring goes I mean, I didn't show you the markers just because, you know, that's pretty. We kind of knew how that would turn out. Um, trying to decide if I want to make the circles. I think I'm going to make the circles a different color. So, let's see, this is not a circle, and, okay, and this is not a circle, no idea what the other colors are going to be in this, but 
because of this, I wanted kind of a, um, the main things to be pink and orange. This is my circle. Okay, pretty much everything left is a circle or similar to a circle. Not those. Okay, so let's do orange. There's so much activity in our neighborhood today. It, first of all, it's a really nice day, but it's, um, yeah, it's crazy. There's bulldozers and I don't know what the people across from us are doing, but there's a, a small bobcat type bulldozer in their yard and there's markings. So they have mapped out where the utilities are and stuff. So it's like, hmm. What's she doing? It'll be fun to see. Although I told Mike, <laughs> I said, it's quite petty of me, but I'm a little jealous of people who are actually finding people to do the work that they have around their home. <laughs> oh, yeah. We haven't heard from our guy, can you tell? Hopefully one of these days. I mean, you'd think at least so he could get the supplies. I'm, that's not a circle, but I'm still doing it. Um, so he could get the supplies ordered, at least you would think, but I don't know. It's a roller coaster. I get all excited when we hear from him, and then I'm like, blah. <laughs> Well, that was exciting. Oh, shoot. We're not going to hear from him for months. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like I say, I get, a little, I get a little jealous of neighbors who are, like, have people working on their house. It's like, well, good for you. Okay. Well, this is fun. As you can see, I'm having a good time. So, yeah. So, after I make this video, I have to go to the bank. We leave tomorrow for our taking care of our granddaughter and getting her to her volleyball tournament and all of that. Then we're home for, home for two days and I leave on my retreat. So, those two days are going to totally be packing. I might do a video of that. I don't know. I feel like I'm so unorganized, but other than my journal kits that I've put together to make, but but that might be kind of fun. I did one years ago. I think if you um, search Gail Augustinelli retreat, that video will come up with the retreat packing, but you know, it might, might be a bit different these days just because you know kind of do things differently I'm finding I'm finding more um, green spots that I need to do this right here okay anyway you get the drift, right? There's one. Okay, let's let's do that green one so I don't forget them all together and then I can I can do the rest another day or something. I don't know. Maybe we should just finish up with this. I don't know. Uh where'd you go? Right here. Okay. So I kind of did that whole black. Oh, there I missed a couple of orange. <laughs> it's I I miss things too when um when I'm doing the intersections. Sometimes I will miss one. 
and go back. I always go back and look. One of the things I've found helpful, this isn't a good example to show you. Which one would be a good example to show you this? I think one of the, um, I'll show you here. Let's grab one of these. So one of the things I've found helpful is when I'm doing, for instance, when I'm doing the little curves, like if you take your pen and go like all the way around this to make it the shape, then, and you do that on all of them, then your intersection is going to be curved, if you see what I mean. So sometimes, like if I'm working on this one, I'll use a pencil to show you. Sometimes if I'm working on this one, I'll do that little curve. And instead of just doing that little curve, I'll just curve around like that or up like that just to make that rounded curve. If that, I hope that makes sense. I don't know. Just in doing them, I've found a few little tricks like that to help me. Okay. Well, this is so fun. Look how fun that goes with that. Okay, well, let's keep going on this one for a little bit. Let's see what time do we have. We have about 20 minutes. I don't know. I think I'm going to stop, guys, because that's what I wanted to show you. I'll just do a quick recap. So watercolors, right? We've got oil pastels over here, which I really enjoyed working with those. And then these are the Distress Crayon, not a fan of for this particular project. Now, I know you can wet those too, and maybe they'll be better. Let's just give it a quick try with a wet and see, see if we like it better, the Distress Crayon. Nope, I, I still don't. I don't like it. So... Just my opinion. You guys try it for yourself. But um, so love the markers. These are just these kind of markers. Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen Big Brush. That's what I colored this with. Um, love the oil pastels. Don't love the Distress Crayon. I'm okay with this. I it, If I can find the stuff to blend it with, I'll like it better. And then this is the Gelatos. Love that. Love that. Love the yellow um, with water. Did not love the purple. So what I'll probably do is go back. Okay, where's my dark purple? Right here. This one that I put a little water on, I think I'm just going to go back in and rub it in again because I don't like how the water looked with it. So apparently that is a color by color sort of a, a thing as far as... Because I love the yellow. I just didn't like how it how it turned out on the purple. <sighs> okay. So that's what I wanted to show you today. A bunch of different ways to color in the neurographic art. So I um, hope you enjoyed this. And we'll um, give this a try yourself. It's so fun. I really have enjoyed it. So thanks again to Shannon Green for inspiring me to start this sort of art. I really have enjoyed it. So have a grateful day, everyone. We will just see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.